Hey everyone, Fear Crawler here. Welcome to the video. Have you ever received an offer in the mail that sounded too good to be true? I know I certainly have. Take these for example. Now apparently if I send these guys 50 bucks every month, I can keep things like my internet and heat on. Psh, like I'm gonna fall for that. Which brings us to today's video. A cautionary tale about offers that sound too good to be true. And a bit of a reminder to always read the fine print. Enjoy. Baby, it's me. Please, please don't hang up. I, I want to explain what's been going on for the last few weeks. So please, just, just listen, okay? Um, I'm sorry I took off like I did. I couldn't risk putting you and the kids in danger. Things are really messed up, and I'm sorry. I want to explain what's going on, so please hear me out, okay? I never told you this, but I lost my job six months ago. I walked into work one morning and they just terminated my position. They didn't even tell me why. They just told me to clean up my desk and leave. Seven years at that job and that was how they treated me. It's crazy. I didn't know how to tell you. I didn't know how to explain myself. I guess I was just afraid you'd leave me. I just felt like such a failure. Like I had let you and the kids down. And I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I did everything I could to hide it from you. Every morning when I was heading to work, I was actually driving to the park. I'd sit there until it got dark out and then head back home. Every time I made a house payment or paid a utility, it was coming out of our savings account. I didn't want you to find out. And that's why I'd always grab the mail before you could have a chance to read it. I didn't want you to see those bills piling up. <sighs> it was so stupid of me. I was getting desperate. We were down to our last hundred dollars when I got a letter in the mail. I didn't know what to make of it at first. It just kind of looked like junk mail. Like some kind of a solicitation. It was just something really strange. The envelope had some weird address on it that I didn't recognize and the name of some business that I later found out doesn't exist. The letter inside referred to me by my first name. It, it didn't really say a lot, but I guess you could say that it said enough. The top line read, Michael, how much is your soul worth? And below that was a blank line with a dollar symbol next to it. I had to kind of laugh at this. I mean, what the hell was this thing anyway? Was this some kind of a joke? But as I held that letter in my hand, there was just something really strange going through my mind. I don't know how to describe it, but I made the worst decision of my life. I scribbled in a dollar amount. I don't even remember how much I wrote down, but it was quite a big number. That much I can tell you. There was another line below it. It said, Please sign in red ink. Huh. <laughs> red ink. Who signs anything in red ink, right? But I did it. I grabbed a red pen and I signed my name to it. But as I was making the last curve in my signature, I cut my thumb on the corner of the page. And it bled. Oh my god, how it bled. I've never seen a paper cut bleed like that before. Next thing I knew, I had made a bloody thumbprint next to my signature. I didn't really think much of it at the time. I just covered my thumb up with a bandage and I, I put that letter in the mail. I figured, hey, what could it hurt, right? We were broke and I couldn't tell you. I was desperate. I didn't know what else to do. It was strange. The next day I got another letter in the mail. Same address. Same fictitious business name. I... I thought maybe it was another solicitation. But it wasn't. I got a response. 
I had just put that thing in the mail the day before, and somehow I had already gotten a response. This letter said even less, but like the first letter, it said enough. Just one word on it. Granted. I didn't know what that meant. What was granted? At the very bottom of the letter, there were some symbols that I didn't recognize. They didn't look like any kind of writing I was familiar with. They definitely weren't in English. I don't know what you'd call them, but they were the strangest thing I've ever seen. A few days later, as I was pretending to go to work, I made a quick stop at the mailbox. I had forgotten to grab the mail from the day before, and like I said, I, I didn't want you to know. I didn't want you to see all those past due notices. The mailbox is full. I thought, oh great, this is it. They're gonna shut off everything. We're gonna lose the house. After I got to the park, I started tearing open the letters. To my surprise though, these weren't cancellation notices. I opened each and every single one of those letters and they all said the same thing. Thank you for your payment. How was that even possible? I didn't have any money. I hadn't sent them anything, but sure enough, each one of them showed a payment sent. I thought perhaps this was some sort of mistake, so I started calling them the next day, and sure enough, a payment had been made to each and every single one of them. Within just a couple of months, we were actually caught up. Someone had been making payments in my name, and I have no idea who it was. I wish that was it. I wish that was all that had happened. <laughs> but that's not all. I started receiving checks in the mail. I didn't even bother reading the letters attached to them. I just, I went to the bank and I started cashing them. And, and they were in really huge amounts. Crazy, crazy amounts of money. I had never seen that much money in my life before. I didn't question where it came from. But I finally put it all together. The week after I got each of those checks, there was always some type of a catastrophe. The first one I read about was a family of six that was murdered in their house. Nothing was taken. It didn't look like a robbery, but their bank accounts had been drained. Their savings was over $75,000, the exact same amount on one of those checks I had received. The next thing I knew, I was reading about multi-millionaires going missing, only to have their bodies discovered weeks later. Their bank accounts had been drained. And every single time, the amount matched one of those checks that I'd gotten in the mail. I'm not crazy. I know I caused this. I had signed that piece of paper. It was a contract. I had sold my soul. I caused those people to die. This is my fault. I stopped cashing the checks after a while. I just couldn't take the guilt. I even tried to mail them back, but they just kept coming back to me. Every single time they were stamped address unknown. The checks just wouldn't stop coming. And people just kept dying. Oh God. And now you need to know why I left. Someone had left a business card taped to our front door. It had two words written on it. Collection notice. And it was signed using those same strange symbols that I saw at the bottom of that letter that I signed my name to. I went out that morning to get some coffee at the bakery and there was someone standing in line that just looked like he didn't belong there. He was the strangest looking person I've ever seen. If you could even call him a person. His face looked like it had been mutilated. He was ridiculously tall and wearing a trench coat and he was carrying a briefcase with him. He turned his face towards me and looked me dead in the eye and <laughs> it was like nobody else in the bakery could see him. And the whole time he's looking at me, he's tapping his fingers on his briefcase. <laughs> I ran out of there and got to my car and I just started driving. 
I don't even know where I was trying to drive to. I was just trying to get away from him. I must have gone all the way out of the city. I found myself on a road I didn't even recognize and I was kind of lost. I saw some people on a street corner and I stopped to ask them for directions. And that same guy was standing there looking at me. I signed my soul away and he was there to collect it. Don't you understand? I had to leave. And I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I didn't want you to be in danger. I didn't want anything happening to the kids. And I'm sorry. Someone's at the door. I... I need to do this. Just... I need to answer it. I love you, okay? Tell the kids I love them. Are you still there? Oh, it's just a messenger. Oh, honey, you sent me a card. That's sweet. Honey, what is this? Thank you for your payment. Who the hell is this? <laughs> Well, I think we all learned something today. Always remember to pay your utility bills on time. What was that? Oh, that wasn't the point of today's video? Oh, well, to be perfectly honest, I wasn't paying attention anyway. Short attention span. Ooh, a kitty. So until next time, everyone take care, be safe, and above all, stay scared. I gotta go.